Good afternoon on the Empty Skull Ranch. Here we are, part five. Part five of the Bowie Knife build. So, we have this guy here completed, ready to go, but it's feeling a little lonely, so it needs a sheath. So, hopefully, by the end of this video, see we got all our tools laid out here, by the end of this video, it'll have a sheath. All right, let's get started. go we got this guy here I already cut out just some uh, vegetable tanned leather some tooling leather decent thickness so we are going to transform this unassuming object into that sheath so first part is we got to make sure that this thing will fit it and I had already picked up a buyer for this blade and communicated with them and uh they said they were going to be carrying it on their left side so keeping that in mind left side we have a sheath that's going to face this way so that way when you put it on your hip it's going to dangle in that fashion we also got a little ring we're going to feed into here to make a swivel type of loop so let's get started on this guy so we gotta place the knife inside like so. I had already traced around it to cut this and uh, left generous amount of margin so that way I can dial it in. You can always get rid of extra, you can't add. So let's make sure it'll fit nice and snug by taking the other side, putting it over, kind of in a way that it would be sitting in there naturally. So, to get that accomplished, we actually got to move it quite a bit over this way. So, when I place this on there, it kind of favors this side. So, we are going to rivet, 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 rivet right there. And we are going to put one right here we're gonna put one down here put a couple along this edge just to keep it from interfering with the stitching that's going to be in place so we are going to like I said make it a nice tight fit so that way it remains captive I'm also going to do a little strap over this side to kind of keep it in there as well so let's get those first two holes done and hope that it lines up still Alrighty, alrighty. I got a punch right here. And we're gonna lay those pieces on top of each other. And I'm just going to punch right through, make sure it's stopped on the right cog. And uh, I'm just going to punch right through that. It's kind of close to the edge, so I don't want to make it so that it doesn't work. Make sure it's gone through all the layers, do a little bit of rotation. And once you've got that hole done, just so you know your next hole is going to be done right, put an anchor in there. That way it stays together. That way you're not punching holes into something that's not going to line up later. So, come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. There you go. There you go. 
So now we're going to do the same on the other side. Remember, it was kind of a close fit, so we are going to go a little close to the edge on this guy as well. Maybe right about there. Because the stitching is going to start from right here. So, punch through, punch through. Make sure you've gone through all the layers. Do a little bit of a wiggle, pull it out. You got a hole clean through to the other side. We're going to do the same thing, put another anchor right on this side. And now the hope is that this blade will pass. And kind of hold them together to simulate them being done. Oh, yes. Nice. The blade remains captive in there. And push it right to the very end and see where it's going to wind up. We can also do a little bit of wiggling. Kind of cut it a little bit awkward on that one, didn't I? See how it could, kind of goes like that, so it wants to tilt out. It's not too late in the build, actually, to modify. Or shave a little bit down on that. Either way, the blade is in the sheath. Sandwiched and protected. So, now we will also kind of form this leather. This leather is very nice to work with because it's just pliable and all that. So if you press it into the blade, it'll kind of take an impression. See, it's already starting to. So you want to give it that impression. And also that impression is going to help us when the stitching part begins. I'm going to do the same on this side. Kind of form it around it. Form it around it. Make sure that it's happy in its new location. Oh yeah, it's kind of out of camera there. So, form it around it. Get that leather used to its new shape. You know, like how we had the annealing process or the normalizing process when we made the blade itself. It's, uh, once you're working something, you kind of got to let it get used to being in its new shape and then kind of reapply that pressure. So, going back to the other side, it's gotten used to it. So, we know that this will fit it, and we know we got some stitching to do too. So, pull her back out of there, set it aside, and we have a very good template to start with. So now we got to start getting some holes in there, because pushing a needle through this leather is quite difficult. I've done it, I have done it with the stitching all, painstakingly pushed through both layers and surprisingly haven't broken any needles, but this is our stitching all right here. So just one of them. I have another one in the house. that's a little bit nicer than this one, but we're going to want to make holes looking for holes all around this. And we're going to keep this secured with these two anchors. So that way we don't go off track with our holes. So this is the way the sheet's going to want to be. We can even secure it at the tip, just the tip. So I'm going to make a mental note again of where that may be. So there's our blade in there again, in the same contours. And we're going to take note, oh, a little close on that one. Oh, it went a little off too. There it is. Now it's in its impression. All right. So right around here is where we're going to do that end rivet, rivet, rivet. Oh, that went a little off the anvil. This isn't the best hole puncher, <laughs> but it does the trick. So now place that rivet in there without its backing, of course, because we don't want to we still have some tooling we're going to do on this. So now we know where our holes we have to be. All right, let's get to punching. Well, we're going to continue on making these holes with this little guy. It's uh, I got one of these four pronged units, but this leather is a little thick to 
go through all those layers. But as I found out when I started, I thought, nope, I'm not gonna use this for this application. I wanna make sure these holes line up so I don't wanna have to do it side after side. So then you put them back together and you find out none of your holes line up and then your sheath is all stitched together, all wiggly and waggly. So this way ensures, because we got it anchored, remember, all these corners, it's gonna keep it in one spot. So, working our way around it. That was kind of a misstep, that one, but the punch is already there, so keep it going. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no fast way to do this. Not without sophisticated equipment, machinery and all that, but then it wouldn't be quite homemade now, would it be? So I'm gonna continue with those holes and we're gonna be right back once it's all punched up. There we go. Got these little marks here, but they're kind of gonna work out a little bit. That's on the back of the sheath anyhow. But we got all the stitching done right here. Kind of deviates right over here because I wasn't quite sure where the edge was lying, but we're gonna have a rivet right here anyhow. And we're gonna have a rivet right there. And one's already right here. Here, 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 and here. Just to kind of keep it as a protector. As the blade enters, it's not going to slice through the stitching. It's going to encounter the squeezed leather right there. I might even put, uh, right here is all right. So that is kind of how she's going to fit in there. So let's get over to the bench here. Well, the anvil, now my tooling bench. And we're going to start with maybe old classic here. I got the basket weave and I got this kind of, floral border that I like using. It's uh, my other sheath features that pattern. And I really like the way it looked and so did the one who's buying this knife. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let's get to the tooling. All right. I am going to peel this guy Heel this guy. I'm gonna stick this part elsewhere because that's just the backer, the old backer. So now I'm gonna start with this basket weave and floral pattern. I'm gonna do the floral pattern all the way down the side, trying to keep everything nice and uniform. And then the basket weave is going to kind of come across the middle right here, leaving a void right here and kind of a little bit of a um, border right there. So let's get to it. I gotta find my, there we go. Trusty mallet. And we are going to start actually with the basket weave across the top. Let's try that. All right, place her where I want her. Gotta make sure you put these things in exactly the spot you want them. And then Follow that last divot and go across. And it gives the look of being woven. You see this pattern a lot on gun holsters, you see it on handcuff cases a lot, you see it on uh, basically just the tried and tested type of pattern. It's pleasing. Relatively simple to do. And one more row. Just to give the design some depth. As you breach or bridge these parts right here. Make 
make sure you really set that in there because the leather can kind of return to normal if it's really tough. Well, not really normal, but it'll just be kind of a shallow impression and it won't have that depth that you were going for. This is a pretty simple one to uh, kind of stiffen up if you need to. Just make sure you are 100% certain before you start pounding. And continue. Just like so. Right across. And right here. Also keep in mind we're getting a little close to that rivet area and that will be the conclusion of that top border. So you can even kind of come in here and do a uh, stand on end type of thing to make it look like the pattern as a continuous. So let's see if we can sneak that in there. Not intruding on the rivet hole of course. So we're going to tail her up a little bit and give her a diagonal shot right there just like that do the same on this side just to kind of set it in so it doesn't look like it just peters off into a uh, non-definite end so i'm going to go back and just kind of give these a little bit more depth So, now we're gonna start on the floral design. So, that is gonna start right up at the basket weave and we're actually gonna encase the basket weave in that floral type of pattern. So, let's start with this corner. And we wanna make sure we point her in the right direction because that is gonna set the tone for the rest of the sheath. Now we're going to come up here, kind of border that basket weave, just slightly up, a little higher than I wanted to, but like I said, it sets the tone. You can even give it kind of a little bow out so that it sits in there. Once you get the rest of the pattern going, it all ties in. This is, uh, mind you, I'm a jack of all trades, but a master of none. So I make my fair share of mistakes doing this stuff, but mistakes are what teach you how to get better. But you see how it kind of ties in now. It's got that pattern at the top. It's got the start to the floral border. And we're going to do another band of basket weave that's going to encompass this area in here. So, going along. Set the punch. Set the tool. Make sure she's in the right spot. And go to town. Hammer on it! time for coming right at you the basket weave I'm gonna kind of go right about here fair to say across and across nice and happy so we're gonna kind of start away from those floral patterns right there I need to cut my nails geez what the hell is going on there? Right. 
So, with this pattern, basically coming in here, and then you're doing your first hit, which is right there, but you're not gonna go straight across for your next one. You're gonna come back, back off the bottom corner of that one, and then get one right in there, and then move up to that one. Same thing on the bottoms. You're just connecting to that bottom corner. So, continuing this pattern, my next hit is gonna be right there, and then right there. And then likewise down here, here, and go all the way across. It's kind of a fun thing to do. It jazzes up a project, you know, gives it a little bit of a different look. So that's, uh, I'm gonna continue on and we will see what she's looking like. All right, I just went over and kind of darkened them all up a little bit just to give them a little bit more depth again. I've been using that word a lot today, depth. So we're gonna take this one that just fell on the ground here and we are going to come around and do our border around it so i'm going to decide whether i'm going to do an, one continuing like that or one that'll encase the stripe to make it seem like an independent stripe going across this or just introduce it back into that i think the independent stripe might be the way to go because it is a kind of a different injection into the overall facade of the sheath. So, here we go. Pound her in there. that one this one's a little bit harder to when you go and darken them up because it's harder to kind of find your feet with this one it's got a rounder face to it so you kind of got to look at what you're lining up to and when you start hitting with it you just gotta keep it going because it has a tendency to walk walking wow what we got here, some flowers on the border of that design. That's strange, crazy even. Anyway, enough of that. All right. Kind of got the picture of it. It makes it look like a stripe. Uh, you know, better choice of words, but a stripe, like a basket woven stripe. And healing in that one little part. When I use that term, I mean, we're kind of trying to blend. So if you run out and then it's only going to be a half a design before it imprints into the next one, I like to take, I think I explained this earlier, but I'll show it a little closer. I'll just take the heel and dig it in in the corner just to end the definition like I did right here. Put the heel right in, dig it in so that it kind of completes that stripe. It's better than leaving a void. So, continuing on to the top incorporation. Kind of did an extra line of basket woven too because I just was having so much fun doing the pattern. So I figured, what's the harm in getting them just one more? Just one more. Got that guy in there. And so on and so forth. Wow, that one came out nice and dark. Continue. I like it when they come out like that on the first whack because then you know it's not going to be one that you're going to have to com continuously go over to get it to stay. You kind of want to make
make sure you got it right on the first time and then go along with it getting the next one in there it's not a precise science it's more or less just something you get the hang of over the years and improve upon it you can figure out different ways to improve upon your techniques what works for one person may not work as well for the next guy so again you see i have to do that little heel blend but basically got an imprint on it oh yeah here i'm holding it high again i have to do the heel thing again right there so basically went from a plain piece of leather to something that has a little bit of jazz to it some moxie and i'm thinking about right here leaving some of that on so i can put another larger hole for a retention string some leather lace down there so that when you put it on you have something to kind of grip around your leg that way it will stay there so going on we'll see you in a little bit well now that we got that in there and it's looking like it's ready to go we are going to join it together and we're gonna do that stitching i was talking about so going by the rivet hole right there i think it's safe to say i can rivet the top one put this rivet right through there into its other perspective place rivet through the top there we go now we're going to put the back of this rivet in here and sandwich them together mm -hmm. sandwich anyway um, I think i'm gonna make some lunch that sounds good so see how that kind of bells it out a little bit and when the blade enters repetitively it'll make it its own cavity so got to find a backer for this one the old backer i think i said that already today so push that in right there and we have contact so the way i like to do these is twofold i either use a pair of pliers and i squeeze them and you can hear that gratifying pop and they're together or just pound the crap out of them on the end so we're going to pound the crap out of them Let's go over here, grab this. Let's see which one of the mallets to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy's plenty. So, put the backers onto them, lay them down, and then I'm gonna do just a quick pound. And, Flat on the back, flat on the front. Do the same to this side. Quick little pound. Going to pound town. There we go. Flattened and flattened. Terrific. They are now joined together forever. Well, yeah, they are. They are joined together forever, like it or not. They can never be divorced. Well, unless you really rip them apart with some kind of a more aggressive tooling. But we're gonna start now stitching and applying the other rivets as we go along. So I'm kind of gonna do it in that fashion, apply the rivets as we're gonna go. So the front and the back, well, the beginning and the end are already in. So now start with this guy here. But I first gotta put the, thread the needle through the eye. Let's see how well I can do this. Thread the needle. Focus, focus. Oh, no, missed it. Missed it. Nana, nana, boo, boo. There. Oh, oh, almost had it. There. I'm not going to let this beat me. All right. There. As easy as that. 
kind of running low on stitch in here, but we should have enough to go around the sheath. The way I kind of gauge that is I put it around and form the shape loosely with a lot of, a lot of generous, yep, so it makes that U and it should make another one. So what we do when we go in through there, I'm gonna reel it back a little bit, dial it down a bit. So I'm gonna be pulling it off of that spool anyway. So as we get it into where we need it. So let's push it through that first hole. We're through the first hole. Now we gotta just get this tail out through here and just feed it. It must feed. <laughs> right there. And you can see it going in off the spool again. And we're gonna make that U shape again, just so we know we have enough thread on the outside of it. Cause this is basically gonna be the counterpart on the back. So we have outlined that yes, we do have enough thread with a generous tail. I'm gonna pull out just a little bit more. All right, plenty of thread on the other side of this. Now we're gonna start our pattern. We're just gonna keep it going. All right, remember where I left off. There we go. Push it in, pull it out, and it makes that loop. So then you take this end and drive it through that loop and continue. Pull it tight, and that is the first knot or the first stitch. We're gonna continue going through. Kind of torn on whether I like to do the holes first or just punch her through like a barbarian. Cause it's, uh, at least when you punch it through, you definitely know which side of the loop you wanna go through because it really has a tight squeeze on it and it feels gra uh, gratifying because you know you got a nice strong hold because the friction of the leather is holding the, the thread tight. This way you kind of got to keep reaffirming that grip and uh, so it doesn't get loose. So either way, it'll hold. So push her on through there, make that loop and come through with the end. Make that loop. There we go. Make that loop come through. Pull it tight. See how that's already spread
last stitch, I already cut it, but when you bring it through, instead of making that loop, you pull that loop slack, and then you cut the tag in, and now you have two tails sitting there, so you tie those in a knot. And that's what makes the final stitch. Well, there we have it. The sheath in progress. Still have a few steps to go, but I laid in these rivets in the back. Now we're going to play a game of whack-a-mole with rivets. All right. Oh, that was right over the hardy hole. <laughs> One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. Five. And six. Whoa, almost got away from us there. Last but not least, these two guys. All right. No more jingle jangle. Stop it, take us. <laughs> there we go. All set, and you can see where it struck over the hardy hole. But at least it's on the back of the sheath. And it didn't go through, didn't cause any real damage. All righty. Now, let's get to the next part. Look, we're back at our old friend, Belt Sander. Just to rough out these rough edges to take them down. Take them down a notch. thing I left this end right here for a purpose. I'm going to select on this wheel the wheel the largest punch right there. And I'm going to go through the goo. Right about there, leave a little bit of meat, some meat. Punch her nice and good. Oop, there we go. I'm just going to pull that out. I can't do that one handed. All right, now we got to put this ring, my precious, into. there and flip this over like so and that is going to be the recipient of two rivets and then and then there's going to be a uh, I don't have a piece coming up right here that's gonna have to go grab a couple other pieces of leather from the house and make the loop for the belt and make the retention strap for the knife itself. So we'll be right back. Now, as you can see, I had to do the retention strap right here 
but I had to poke them holes in there with my little wonky uh, hole puncher there. So I want to make sure that we work in those rivets. I put the long end on this side and then the short end on the inside. So we were going to have to drive them in there real careful like is on the horn of this anvil. We're going to stuff the gullet of the case right on there and then we're going to pound it. Work them in nicely so that there's no stick out. A little bit on that one. There we go, nice and flat. Nice and flat in there. So, now we just gotta do the little punch right there. Put in a little snap it do right there and then we'll be all set with that. Then it's time for loop and belt loop. Alrighty, let's get that hole punched. Right about here in the middle of this. Get it right in there. There we go. Now, next part. Now, you didn't think I was going to leave that strap plain. I had to put a little bit of something, something to it. A little bit of meow. Just to dress it up a little bit so that it would uh, match the rest. Kind of poor lighting over here in this corner, but let's take it elsewhere. I have this in my vice right now. There we go. So that's kind of what I gave for a little addition onto it. Just a little bit more of those floral outline borders. Now we're going to do the little snappy do's here. All right. We are going to put the shiny part and the jiggly part together. So this is the actual snap itself. Drive that into there. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna have to peen out that, see right in there. So I'm gonna cradle that in the wood to hopefully not compromise the dome too much. They always kind of crush a little bit. And I'm gonna find a little uh, punch, some kind of a drift, and then we're gonna fan out that center post. All right, we got this hole right here, and we're gonna feed this T post for the bottom. That's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Feed it from the bottom, right through there. There we go. Go to your home. Are you too good for your home? Well, in the meantime, let's get that other snappy do on there, shall we? All right, I got us a nice little drift right here that should fan that edge out, or that end out nicely. So here we go. I'm gonna send this thing back right into here. This is the actual snap clip itself. So I'm going to take that, put it into one of these divots in here. I think I found a good one. Put some down pressure on the snap itself. Make sure that we're fanning out. And we are fanning out nicely. Although it is favoring one side. Let me see if I have a larger drift. To take care of that. There we go. And that better. And there we go. I'll take this guy in to mushroom it over. Make sure it's even. Steven. And grab this guy with the flat end that can encompass right over it. And hold it nice and flat. By golly, G Willigers. 
I think we have a match. See how it's flattened over? It's not gonna go anywhere from there. Now it's gonna come meet that other guy. As I said, there's always gonna be a little bit of deforming unless you have something that perfectly outlines it. Got to find that hole over there. Get it started like that so at least it cleans up the hole a little bit. And now we're going to feed it through the bottom. And now I can see it a little bit better. You can tell it wants to come through. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of finding here. There we go. Got it to poke through. A little bit of an act of Congress, but got it in there. Now we just got to put the other end of the snapper right in there. So we got to pop this guy right over that. Do the same process we did on the other guy. Mushroom in out that end. Get it entrapped in there. Oh, and then you drop the driver right there. Like, ah, 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 ah. Just like that. Oh, wrong end. <laughs> and then come in with El Capitan right here. Get it nice and flattened. Make sure it can't turn or rotate in there. And as you can see, that one too has been driven. So now, test them out. Snaps and unsnaps. So you've got a good snap on there now. So now all you need to do is just put the loop right here with the belt loop. All right, can't neglect the belt loop either. Working on that little guy right here. Kind of did some of this off camera just because it's getting a little repetitive, you know, the rivet driving and all that, but I will drive those two in. There we go. Nice and uniform in appearance. So, I also took the liberty of putting these holes in there. So these guys will go in like that. And there is your, what you call it, the belt loop. Drive some rivets through there. The one through here, I had to compensate cut in the back right here fit the retainer strap and the belt loop keeper. So let's put those rivet backers on, the old backers. It's like it to pull away. Sure does life a struggle. And we are just gonna go drive those guys in like that. And there we have it. Nice and riveted. Basically, there's the sheath. But something tells me it looks a little plain. So how about we do a little bit of dyeing? Yeah, let's dye it. Let's make it a little uh, more robust looking. <laughs> All right, here we have it. I've selected a couple different colors. So I got saddle tan and I got vintage gel. So I did a couple of little test splotches right here on just one that had some various toolings on it. But that middle pattern right in here is a combination of saddle tan and vintage brown. 
So, I'm gonna do that. I like the look of that. So, let's grab us a piece of towel, make a nice little edge on it. And what we're gonna wanna do here is gob on some of this gel. And we're gonna take it, we're gonna go around and highlight all the tooling marks. So we're gonna wanna get it nice and deep into all those tooling marks. Get it really pushed in there and then do a surface skim like that. Surface skim and then get into those tooling marks. So let's get another bit of it on there before we get too dry. Do that again, get it to infiltrate those little crevices all around, don't leave in any stone unturned and then surface skim it. Get it deep inside and surface skim it. So we're not committing to too dark a shade too quickly. Surface skim, but we want that to stay nice and deep in those ridges. So we're gonna go back and get the ones we missed. Like that guy, surface skim it. That guy, and surface skim. Surface, surface, surface. You get the picture. Get it deep in there. Probably covering it. Surface skim it. All around, do the same play all over the thing. Get that edge there, a little bit more exposure. There we go. Same thing, surface. And if it doesn't look like it's really going into it, but you have a lot of gobs elsewhere, just surface skim it and then go back. You don't want this stuff to stay on there too long and then turn it a darker shade than you had, in, had intended. So always go back and surface skim. Once it goes in there, skim the surface. But notice how it's kind of pooling in those marks. Like right there, push it around a little bit. Yeah, that's right, give me your lunch money. Push it around. Like, looks like you're a little lost. Maybe not that kind of push it around, but you know, you get the picture. There we go. I think I'm running dry. I need a little bit of a refill of the juice. I think I call everything the juice. <laughs> Surface skim. Go deep into those wells and then surface skim it. And I seem to have already run dry. I thought I had more than that on there. Oh well, there's more in the bottle. All there, it's all the surface skimming that's doing it. Skim the surface, go back. I wonder when I'm gonna say surface skim. Let's sit a little longer and then surface skim. Ha <laughs> ha, there it is. Let's do it a little longer than I wanted. Surface skim. I'm beginning to think there that you, you just can't help it at this point. All around that, and then of course the middle parts right there. We're gonna try to see if we can get like an antique type of look to this. After all, it is vintage gel. So we got you another gop. Put it down here. Through all those guys. 
I'll get deep inside that tooling. Again, pushing it around. Get deep into that stuff. And then into the center right there. And then just surface skim it away. All the while blending what you're seeing. Kind of like with the epoxy, once you get it down, you're kind of on a timer. Once you get it down there, you're thinking to yourself, oh crap, I gotta get this stuff moving before it sets too deep. But looks like all those tooling marks have gotten filled. A couple here and there I gotta get. I'm not going to worry about the edges right now because if we start diverting our attention elsewhere, we're going to miss something crucial on the front. This is the most important part. I don't know how the resolution's coming up on the uh, camera, but it's starting to do the do. It's starting to do what I was hoping it would do. Surface skin. And these little areas, you can just give little tiny touch-ups to and surface skim them away. Let it stay a little bit, surface skim. Notice that we got the, uh, got all these little guys highlighted in here. It's kind of on a, Well, there it is, guys. The finished product. Start to end. You, sit, you got to see this thing start as just a plain piece of scrap steel. And now we got a Bowie knife. So there we have it. I ended up putting uh, just a little piece right here, just a little, little bit of lace. And then I just cut out this little thing and put two holes in it. That's why I left that meat in there so that way... Uh, just something to tie around your legs so this thing doesn't flop all over the place and uh, become annoying. I have one almost like it and I wear it all the time in the woods and it's, uh, and that little uh, piece of lace comes in handy, I tell you. But there she is, start to finish. Let's see if I can pull this out. The piece, this sheath is very, very, sticky right now well not sticky but like very tight fitting so it'll break in after repetitive use but there's a little snag point right there but there she goes those hammer marks that i left in there just to give it that kind of a rustic look Stacked leather there, but there she is, all done and going to her new owner. So, thank you for bearing with me on that one. That was probably a little bit of a longer addition to this, but nonetheless, we got the job done. Saw it through from the beginning to the end. I appreciate you guys sticking around. There's plenty more to come. And I will see you then.